Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today's video is brought to you by Cat File Explorer, the easiest way to see, manage, and clean up AutoCAD files in Revit. Get your free copy today by following the link in this video description. Alright, today is a nice and quick tutorial on showing you how to group things like views, sheets, and schedules in Revit. After this lesson, you will know how to do what I have on screen right now. So for example, under views, I have grouped them by stages, stage one or stage two there. After stages, I can group them by blocks. So the views for building block one will be under this group there. And this one as well, block one. After that, I can even apply another grouping level, which is by view types. So floor plans, 3D views, sections, and so on. This structure is fully dynamic. If I now select this view here and change it to maybe block two, just by tapping in here the value. When I apply that, it is now block two. If I even want to move it to stage two, I can just do that by switching the value here to stage two. And now it's under there, under stage two, block two. Very easy to do. The same goes for schedules. I have here all my schedules grouped by schedule type. So it could be a component schedule, a note block, a sheet list, and so on. Same concept applies to sheets there. I can group them by packages in this case. So I have here two sheets under the GA package and the rest of sheets there will be under the planning package. This kind of structure is easy to set up and fully customizable. At any point in the project, you can revise this structure and even change it if you want to. So let's see now how you can do that yourself. Okay, let's begin. I have opened here just the example model that came with Revit. If we look at the project browser now on the left hand side, you can see it's already organized so that views of the same type are grouped together. Anyway, we can do better than this. So let's right click here on views and choose browser organization. As you can see here, we have different ways to group views, sheets, and even schedules. For example, under the views tab, I have now five different ways to group them. The first one, all, oh, we just show everything. The one for disciplines, if I choose this and then apply, you can see now the views are now grouped by disciplines. So architectural views are under there and coordination views are under here. Let's go back to browser organization. If I choose not on sheets and do OK, now we have only views not on any sheets. So you get the idea. This is where we can choose custom grouping for our views. Let's do that now. Firstly, before we even go to browser organization, we need to add the parameters that can be used for grouping our views in the custom way. Let's now open one view. Let me just go in here again and reset the organization rule to all. If I now open level one floor plan, for example, under properties of the view, we now need a new parameter here to control which group this view should fall under. And to do that, let's go to manage and then choose project parameters. In here, we can choose add. And now it's up to you if you want to make this a project parameter or a shared parameter. The difference is minimal in this case because we're just using this parameter now to group views. But if you choose shared parameters, you can add this parameter to a schedule if that's somehow what you want to do later on. For now, let's keep it simple. I will just add a project parameter here. Let's call this one stage because the plan for today is we group views by stages and then by building blocks. So stage is there. Make sure you set the parameter type to text, just so we can later on give this parameter custom text values, things like stage one, stage two, stage three, and so on. For the group this parameter should fall under, I can choose anyone here. But for now, let's go for identity data because it's kind of a good way to identify a view. Next step, we need to go to categories and scroll down until you see views. When you see it, tick it. We need this parameter here to be applicable to views. Make sure this is an instance parameter as well. And then choose OK. So it's there now. I can do OK again. And because I have done that, if I now look under properties for this view, under identity data, we have now stage as the new text parameter there. Let me put in here stage one, just as a text and apply it. We can now change to level two now. 
And certainly enough, this view also has the new parameter stage, because remember, we apply this parameter to all elements that are views. So for this one, I can now go in here and do stage 2. Here we go. Now, let's use this parameter to group our views. If I now right-click on Views again, choose Browser Organization, we can now change to another grouping rule because the old one doesn't let us edit it. It's something that came with Revit and it's locked down. So we need to choose another one now. You can choose any of those other four rules here. But for me, it's better to do a new one. So let's choose new here. And here, maybe you can name this new rule your organization name. So if you are from ABC Architects, you can put it here ABC. Or for now, I would just say RV Boost because that's where we are from. And choose OK. Now we are editing the rule that will be used by RV Boost. Let's now go to grouping and sorting. And firstly, let's group the views by stage. It's now here as an option because we added it to the views category of this model. Let's do OK. Let's see how it works out for us. Well, I forgot something. Let's go back there. We did modify RV Boost, but we also need to tick this box here to make it a current view grouping rule in use. Click OK. And something has totally changed. If I now expand this stage 1 group there, I have the view that is defined as belonging to stage 1. You see, it stays right there. If I now expand stage 2 and then open level 2 floor plan, you guessed it. This view is of stage 2. Anything with this parameter undefined, in other words, any other views, will go into this triple question mark group here. If I now go maybe for this view here, the 3D view, you can see there the stage parameter for this view is empty. That's why it has gone under this undefined group. If I want to move it to another group, for example, this should be a stage 1 view, I can just go here and then either type in the name stage 1 or I can just go to this drop down menu and choose stage 1. Now, as soon as I apply this, this view will immediately move from this undefined group to stage 1 right there. So far, so good. But what if you want to have multiple grouping levels? That's doable as well and easily. So just go back to manage project parameters and now in addition to stage we need to add the second parameter let's choose add now and maybe call this one block because after the stages we want to group views by building blocks again just like before this parameter should be applicable to views and it should be an instance parameter also it should be a text parameter as well and it should be maybe under identity data for the view. That's all you have to do to define this second parameter. Let's do OK now. Now it's there. We can do OK one more time. This time, if I go to this level 1 view, it is still of stage 1, but underneath that, you have this new parameter ready to be used. So block here, I can say block 1, just like that. And for this to the view here, how about we say this should belong to block 2 and apply this. So after we've done this, nothing has changed because we have to do one more step to add the second grouping level. Just go back to browser organization now, edit the grouping that you have defined previously, switch to the grouping tab again, and this time for the then by parameter or menu, click on it and choose block. Click OK a few more times. And now that has worked. Because here you see under views, we have stage one. Under stage one, we have block one and block two. Each one contains the view that should be under each group. So this view here is of stage one, block one. That's why it's here. This view, on the other hand, is of stage 1, block 2, and that's why it's there. So now you have seen the basic of grouping views. Let's do the same now for sheets. If I go to Manage, and then select Project Parameters again, let's do Add to add the new parameter. 
Now this time I need to have a new parameter for grouping these sheets. Let's say we want to group them by packages. Let's call this one package. Just like the other one, we need to do this as a text parameter under the identity group. The only difference now is the category. Instead of selecting views like before, we need to go a bit up here and select sheets because this parameter here should apply to sheets, not views. Let's do OK now and choose OK again. That has worked if I now select one sheet there, maybe the title sheet there. Under properties, I have now this new parameter called package. Let's say this one should be package GA. I can type GA in there just as a text and apply this. I can now go to sheets, right click and choose browser organization. As you can see there, it has taken us to the same window, but instead of starting from the views tab, we are now under the sheets tab. And just like before, you can choose to use either one of these three there, edit it to your liking. But for now, let's go with a new grouping rule. And I will call this one as well, RV boost. Now we are in the editing mode of this new grouping rule. I can now go to grouping and group it by package. Exactly like before. Let's do OK two times. And just like before as well, I forgot to make it the active rule. So let's go back in here and tick the box for RV boost. And this time we should change a few things. Suddenly it did. If I now expand this undefined group there, we have all the sheets. But if I now go under GA, expand this, we have now the title sheet because this is the group that it should belong to. If I want to move the elevation sheet to the same group, super easy as well, just open it and go to package, choose GA. Now it's there under the new group. A quick tip here is you don't have to do this view by view or sheet by sheet. Let's say I want to move all of these four other sheets here to a new group. I can just select them like this. So click one, hold out the shift key, and then click the last one in the sequence that I want to select. And now I have them all selected. So in here, shift key or control key to multi-select is going to be your friend. Now, because I have them selected, I can go to properties now, and then change this parameter for all of them at the same time. How about we say these should belong to planning? Enter to apply. And just like that, I have now all of them, all of them four sheets under the planning group. Just quicker than doing them individually. Now, just for completeness, you can of course do the same for schedules. If I now right click here, choose browser organization again. I can choose new, name this new rule RV boost. And then under grouping, I can group it by any parameter. This time, instead of creating a custom parameter, because we already know how to do that, let's select one of the default or built-in parameters. How about we go for schedule type and do OK. Make this a current rule, apply this. And you can see now, it has now grouped my schedules according to the schedule type of each one. So this one here is a building component schedule because I'm just scheduling trees here. It is now under the same group, Building Component Schedule. The Node block is there under its own group. If I now go to View, make a new schedule now. But this time we can make it a sheet list. Just add in here some random parameter. Doesn't matter for now. You can see now this new schedule is now under the sheet list group because that's its category. Super easy to do. Now, one last tip that can be useful for you as well when grouping view is this. Let's say I want to go back to views now. And for a moment, let's reset the grouping to a flat structure. You can see now under floor plans, I have levels and site. Let's say I want to group it. So all the views that has the word level at the beginning of the names should go into the level group. And the rest can go to a site group. How can I do that? This is how. Just right click here again, pick the same option there. Under RV Boost, let's edit this one. And switch into grouping. I can now disable these two parameters because I don't need them anymore. Instead, I can select here view name. So view name is there. 
and instead of looking at all the characters in the view name, for example, level one, I can say only look at the first five characters because that will get me level only. Let's see how it goes with this one. Click OK. And as you can see now, we have the group called level. Underneath of this, we have level one and level two. They are grouped this way because their name has the common five beginning characters. If I go to site, the word site is there. It only has four characters, but does it matter? That would still be the group that it should belong to. This rule here could be a bit less useful than most because to use it effectively, you need to name your views in a consistent manner in a big project. That could be a challenge, but at least you know now that's an option. For me, the favorite grouping mode is this. So by stages, and then by building block or zone, and then the view. I can even go one level deeper. So I'll go back to here, edit RV boost. So after stage and then block, I can then group views by the view type. So that will be here, family. Do OK. And now after stages and blocks, I have view types such as floor plans and 3D views. It's not easy to see in this case because we have only one view here. But let's say I want to select this 3D view and change this block to block 1. You can see now we have stages, blocks, and then view types. So either floor plans or 3D views or sections and so on. This is a good way to structure views in your project to make sure things are organized and easily retrievable. Okay, if you enjoyed this lesson and want more like this coming every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, practice what you've learned and I'll see you in the next lesson.